Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amiru. In this video, we are going to learn how to loop through a list of store procedures that we have saved in Azure table with parameters and generate files dynamically in Azure Data Factory. So think about a scenario where we have saved our a uh, lot of information in uh, in the table so uh, we have this table called uh, i call it the sp list so this is uh, uh, going to contain the list of store procedures so it's going to contain a uh, name of a store procedure it is going to contain a uh, parameters uh, for store procedure then it is going to have the values for those uh, store procedure parameters and then uh, uh, what name you would like to use uh, to create the file out of this uh, uh, store procedure when you execute it so this is uh, going to be really interesting uh, demo where uh, um, I, you are not going to make uh, changes into the pipeline. Every time maybe you want to add a new uh, feed or uh, want to create a new file, so you will simply come and add an entry in the uh, this uh, table and uh, create a store procedure. Uh, it would read the data from your Azure SQL database uh, depending on your parameter values uh, and then uh, it will create the feed or CSV or uh, you know whatever the file type you want to create. So this will give you a lot of leverage doing things dynamically. Uh, I have used this one uh, many times in my uh, own projects and uh, this is very helpful instead of like every time you need to create a, a new uh, uh, CSV file or something uh, you go and create a new pipeline. So why not to create a, a, a table with the set of stored procedures and then provide the values for the parameters and then uh, let, let the pipeline one pipeline loop through it and create those all different uh, CSV or text files for you. So now we can go ahead and create this table and uh, I believe it is already created. I have created on my Azure uh, SQL database and uh, let me execute again. Yes, it is already existing there. So let me select the data. So right now I don't ha think it has any data. So no data is uh, there because I just truncated. Now let's go ahead and insert some data. So I'm saying insert into DBO SP list values. So if you guys remember that the very first is one, the identity one, two, three. So we have right here and then you have a store procedure name. So this is our store procedure name. And I left the space by purpose because I need to concatenate with the values. So I left it right here. So if you don't want to leave it, you can always uh, handle in the query and uh, do it. But I just left uh, one blank space at the end. Now, these are the parameters. These are just for the reference. These are, I'm not using it. And uh, what I'm using, I'm using the actual value. So for region uh, and country, I'm seeing right here Asia. And Pakistan, so I put double quotes even around it. So when I insert it, uh, I don't have to do anything when I need to generate the uh, execute query. And uh, then uh, I have uh, order, that's the file name I would like to create. Uh, second, uh, I have this uh, store procedure called product, SP product, and it accepts only one parameter. And uh, I have uh, provide the parameter value hard coded in the table, it's called a laptop. And uh, the name of the file I would like to create is gonna be product. So let's go ahead and insert these values here. Now two rows are inserted and take a look on the values right there. So you can see that uh, one, two, three SP names right here. These are the just for our reference uh, what values are being used on the SP value here. So we are not really using uh, uh, these uh, parameters here. The, uh, we are using the values of those parameters in our uh, execution of store procedure. And this is the file name I would like to generate. Now let me show you the store procedures. Uh, they are very simple store procedure. So this is a SP product. It accepts a product name as a parameter and it is selecting data from the product table where product name is equal to at the rate product name and uh, that's it that's a store procedure and what we have in the product uh, table let me show you so we have only four records here now let's go to another one and here what we have we have a dbo sp order it accept region and country as parameter and now it accept uh, select start from this uh, order where region is equal to region parameter country is equal to country parameter and that's it so if uh, we execute this, uh, let's say, uh, store procedure is going to give us uh, something like this. Okay, so we are all good. We know the definition of our store procedure. We have created a master table that I call it SP list. 
Now, what I need to do here, I need to create a query. So that's the query I'm, uh, I have created. So select execute my store procedure and the name of a store procedure so I can catenate. Then uh, I have a put a single quotes around it on both sides and then just the value. So this is how it is. And then uh, I would like to have a file name with the underscore and then I cast the date to the uh, worker and just uh, concatenate it and I made it a file name from the um, this uh, table. So let's uh, execute this and you will see what I'm talking about. So this is uh, going to generate uh, two uh, rows and uh, this is how it, the data will look. So we are going to take this information and then in using Azure Data Factory. So see right here, it's going to say execute this store procedure with these two parameter values and create this file. So that's what it is going to do. And the first second, it's in DBO SP products, create this, use this value and then uh, create this file. So these are two things we are going to take and use in the Azure Data Factory. So let me take, make a copy of this and let's go to the Azure Data Factory. So we are in the uh, Azure portal. I'm opening Azure Data Factory and my Azure Data Factory name is IT dash adf hit open now we will go to the author and start working so go to author here go to new pipeline new pipeline okay here we will be using first of all we use the lookup why because the loop uh, we are going to use the query that we just uh, showed you right here and uh, this query is going to return us uh, multiple rows uh, or even single row so we are going to use the lookup to get these values and then pass through the for each loop uh, so we can create these uh, files uh, depending on the execution of these store procedures. So, so first of all, bring the lookup. Now in the lookup, and uh, here we can say get list of SPs and file names, whatever, and uh, go to lookup here, and then uh, you're going to go to settings. And here you're going to create a new data set. And we know that Azure SQL database, that's where our this query is going to be running. So we are going to say um, Azure SQL or whatever, leave it with table one fine. And we are going to create a new linked service. Create new and uh, use the subscription, provide the server name, and then select the database name. In my case, it's TechRose IT. Provide the username, TB user. And now we'll hit the password and execute. So test is uh, successful. And now we are all set. Here uh, we do not have to select any table or anything like that. So we will be uh, hitting a click uh, OK. And uh, once we click OK, what we need to do here, we will be using a query. And in the query, we already have written the query. And if you guys remember, that's the query we have written now. So see right there, the one column is called SP, the second column is called file name. And this is output for our this query. So that's our query we are using. Now we are going to go back here. And uh, the first row only, no, we would like to get all the rows. And uh, this is it. Then now we are going to go to the for each loop. In the for each loop, we are going to use uh, the lookup output. Uh, uh, click right there go to settings and here uh, add dynamic content uh, you're going to choose the lookup dot value so it's going to be output dot value that's what we, our expressions here we just added dot value so it is going to bring us both column sp and file name now we are going to go inside the for each loop uh, and here we will be using a copy activity now bring the data here and now what we will do here go to source and here you will go to the data source and it's going to be Azure SQL database, right? Because the, we need to run our uh, SP queries on the database. And here we select uh, the Azure SQL database link service that we just created. And now we are not selecting any table or anything like that. We are going to hit the OK here. Now what we will use here. So we are going to go back to the data set open. And here we are going to go to parameters. And in the parameters, we are going to say new and in the new, we are going to say, uh, let me see what we do here. Yes, so we actually don't have to go there and we are not creating any parameter because we can use some query here. And that's what we generated. So 
we are gonna I'm gonna go back to the uh, right there let me see open and uh, delete this parameter that we don't need it here actually so we go to the source we are here and uh, here we need to tell uh, we will be using a query okay or and uh, that's all we will be doing it here add and then uh, we are gonna say for each dot sp so remember that we have generated the query list so if you run this guy uh, see this is our query so we are using store procedure yes but we have converted this into a query so it is execute query now uh, that's uh, it it's gonna call that query execute one and now we are gonna go to this sync now in this sync uh, we are gonna go to new Azure blob storage and here I'm gonna create a CSV comma delimited file hit the next and here we will go create a new linked service so you provide the subscription provide the storage account and the test connection create now we have to select a folder or container where we would like to place our files so click here and I have input a folder on this blob storage so if I will show you right there that's my blob storage right there and it has a container called input uh, right there okay and input uh, I have a multiple files there but doesn't really matter our file is gonna be created with that date uh, stamp so we'll see these files let them sit there so it doesn't matter okay now what we are gonna do okay first row is the header yes and the select import schema none hit okay and here we will be going to the open and uh, now go to parameters and here we will say new and uh, now click here and we call it the ds file name so data set file name parameter and now we go back to connection and in the connection we are going to use that uh, parameter ds file name but this uh, ds file name has to come from somewhere so that is coming from the for each so we go back to pipeline and here is that one so we have to map this uh, ds pipeline with the our for each that file name so remember that we have uh, two columns are written one is sp and the other one is a file name by this query so we used in lookup uh, and uh, it returned us uh, two columns of uh, sp right there store procedure file name and these are two columns uh, we are using uh, we got in the lookup then we provided the values to the for each and then for each knows that so item dot file name so it is going to get us the file name now we are all set here we don't have to do anything we are going to go ahead and debug so this is how it is the flow is going to be lookup is going to get those two queries with the store procedure execute statements and values now once those values lookup will get that it's going to pass those two records these two records what I was talking about so these two records so they will be passed to the for each loop and for each loop is going to take that and go to the inside is the copy activity and then execute for each of the line so see right there if you see these are the two counts in the value we got these two rows so you have a first row sp is equal to this and file name is equal to this so we got that then second value is this and now once it has it it passed to the for each loop and for each knows that there are two counts now inside that it's going to take it so it will take c right there query this is the query it's going to take and then it's going to generate this records so it's read two rows by using that execute store procedure query and then written to the file same way the next one so it read two rows for the next one as well so we should be all good here I'm gonna go back here let's refresh our blob storage and we should see two files and we can see right there order underscore today's date and product underscore today's date so I can click on order and then uh, we can preview some data edit and uh, we see right there it uh, the data is created successfully now we can uh, hit close go to product and then uh, edit and we can see that uh, two records are generated uh, depending upon the whatever the store procedure uh, produced so this is how you will uh, uh, store your list of uh, store procedures in a table and uh, some uh, parameter values uh, in that table so whenever you want in 
uh, you can come back and always change it. So in my case, so let's say if I don't want to be like, oh, I don't want to be, uh, let me add one more value. So uh, in this case, uh, if I will go and I want to say like, oh, I want to have a, um, but you, you guys get the idea. I don't want to waste actually your time because video is going to get real lengthy. But if you want to add another value here for another store procedure, what's going to happen? You create a store procedure and just add that value here and it's going to create the third file. So it, this I will leave this uh, script uh, in the uh, description and you can take from there. So you have basic understanding of this and then you can keep adding to it and keep generating your file dynamically. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Please subscribe and channel if you guys like my effort.